Hey guys, um, I'm going to be doing a lesson on the derivations for the charging and discharging equations for an RC circuit. Okay, so starting with our charging circuit, we're going to have a battery, a resistor, and a capacitor in the loop. So we have an EMF of epsilon, a resistance of R, and a voltage of V sub C with current I1 passing through all of this. Okay. So we're going to write the Kirchhoff's loop. We're going to have epsilon minus I1R minus V sub C equals zero. Okay, so we know I1 is going to be proportional to the charge changing across the capacitor, which is going to be positive dQ dt, because the charge is increasing as time passes. And we know Vc is going to be equal to Q over C. So plugging this into your initial Kirchhoff's loop, we get the differential equation epsilon minus dq dt times r minus q over c equals zero. Okay, now I'm going to do separation of variables, and I'm going to uh, rewrite the equation as dq dt equals one over r times epsilon minus q over c. So I can rewrite this and do cross multiplication, and I get dq over epsilon minus q over c equals dt over r. Okay, now I'm going to simplify this and I'm going to rewrite it as dq over, factoring out a negative 1 over c, I get q minus c epsilon equals negative dt over rc. Okay, so because I'm looking for a function q of t, and I know that charge is changing, I'm looking for the total charge, so I have to do an integral. I'm going to integrate both sides. Okay, so for the time, we know we're going from zero time to time t, so the limits are zero to t. Zero to t, right? Okay, now at time t equals zero, what's the voltage? Well, the voltage is zero, so that means the charge must be zero, so we're starting at zero for dq. And I'm going to an arbitrary little q, because I'm looking for a function q of t. I'm looking for the charge at some point. So it's going to be little q. So now, for the non-calculus people, you don't have to integrate. But for the rest of us, we're going to be integrating. And I'll have the expression ln of q minus c epsilon evaluated from 0 to q equals negative t over rc evaluated from 0 to t. Okay, I'm going to solve this, and I'm going to get ln of q minus c epsilon over negative c epsilon equals negative t over rc. Okay, so now I'm going to raise both sides to the natural exponent, and I can get the expression q minus c epsilon over negative c epsilon equals e to the negative t over rc. I get q minus c epsilon equals negative c epsilon e to the negative t over rc. And then I can write q of t equals c epsilon times 1 minus e to the negative t over rc. And we know that rc is our time constant, right? Time constant. So then this is written as tau, right? So I'm going to rewrite my expression as q of t equals c epsilon times 1 minus e to the negative t over tau. And that's my charging equation to solve for charge respect to time. Okay. Very frequently, the AP asks you to use um, an equation for voltage. Well, voltage is fairly simple. We know that the voltage on a capacitor is going to be V of c equals q of t over c. Okay, so I can just divide my function by c. So I get q over c equals epsilon over c times 1 minus e to the negative t over rc. Canceling out, I get v of t equals epsilon times 1 minus e to the negative t over rc. And there you go. That's your expression. Okay, so now, um, not so frequently, but the AP will ask you for a function of current versus time. So we know I is equal to dq dt. 
This means if I take the derivative of my q of t function, I should get my function for current. So here's what I can do. I can do d dt of c epsilon times 1 minus e to the negative t over rc. And I get the expression i of t is equal to epsilon over r times e to the negative t over rc. And we write e over r as i naught, so we have the expression i of t equals i naught e to the negative t over rc. Now where did I get i naught? i naught is equal to e over r, as I mentioned. And e over r comes from the fact that at time t equals 0, when t equals 0, the voltage is 0. So we now have a loop of only epsilon and our resistor. So we only have e minus i1r. And we can solve for this and get i1 equal e over r. And that's where our initial current is. So that's why i of t is equal to i naught e to the negative t over rc. Okay, so the AP usually asks you to graph. Well, a graph. It's fairly simple as well. So I'm going to graph charge versus time. So I have time in seconds versus charge. And that's in coulombs. Okay. So at t equals zero, t equals zero, we know that there's no charge on my capacitor, correct? So it's going to come off like this. And we know at t equals infinity, it's going to come up and reach some asymptote and, and level off at some value. Well, at t equals infinity, let's look back at our equation for charge. We see that as t approaches infinity, we're going to approach the value c epsilon. So I come back here and graph the rest of my graph. It's going to be nonlinear, or it's going to be exponential growth. And have a horizontal asymptote at c epsilon. Okay. Also, the AP will ask that you know the RC. Well, the time constant is just a time RC. And you know that the area under this curve will be roughly 0.632 epsilon, which means that at time RC, your capacitor will have charge to 63.2% of the maximum charge, right? Okay, where did I get that number? Well, I'm going to go back to my equation. I see that if I plug in RC for time, I get 1 minus e to the negative 1. Okay, so I'm going to come back here and say that I have, you're going to see that it's roughly equal to 1 minus e to the negative 1 percent of e. Make sense? Cool. Okay. So now that we're done with charging, we're going to move on to discharging. Discharging loop is very simple. We have only a capacitor and a resistor. Okay with R and VC and current I1. Okay, so what do we know about this capacitor? Well, we know it has to be initially charged, otherwise we won't have any current, there's no charge to pass through the resistor, so there has to be initial charge. And we'll call that big Q, an initial big Q, or Q0. Okay, so let's write the Kirchhoff's loop. We have VC minus I1R equals zero. Okay, so just like the charging circuit, we have to rewrite I1 with the differential equation. So we have I1 is proportional to dQ dt. However, this time it's negative. Why is it negative? Okay, we know that there's an initial charge in our capacitor, and it's the, uh, the current is going to be proportional to the rate at which the charge is changing. Well, we know that it's decreasing, so the negative comes from the fact that we know it's a decreasing charge. So I1 is proportional to negative dQ dt. Vc is still equal to Q over C, however. Okay, we can plug this into our equation. We get Q over C plus dQ dt times R equals zero. Okay, so I'm going to do some algebra here. U dt R equals negative Q over C. I'm going to separate my variables. I'm going to have dQ over Q equals negative dt over RC. Okay, just like the charging, I'm going to have two integrals. I'm going to integrate the left and right because I want to know the total charge across my capacitor. I'm, I'm changing in time. So for time, it's fairly simple. It's 0 to t because we're going from 0 time to a time t. And for q, we're going to look from big Q or q naught. 
Why is it Q-naught? Because we know at time t equals zero, we have the maximum charge across your capacitor. So what's our upper limit? Well, just like for the charging loop, we're looking for some arbitrary Q. We're looking for a function Q of t, so we're going to go to little Q. Okay, so, so we're going to have ln of Q equal to um, evaluated from zero, uh, Q naught to Q, sorry. I'm going to have T over RC, negative T over RC. Okay, so I'm going to solve, and I have ln of Q over Q naught equals negative T over RC. Raising both sides with the natural exponent, I have Q over Q naught equals E to the negative T over RC. And I can rewrite this equation as Q equals Q naught E to the negative T over RC. Um, very frequently, you'll see this equation written as Q equals Q naught E to the negative T over RC, where Q is just your function Q of T. So here's your equation. Okay, so just like for discharging, I can divide both sides by C to get my voltage equation. So I have Q over C equals Q naught over C E to the negative T over RC and I get V equals V naught E to the negative T over RC, where V naught is the initial voltage of this capacitor, or the maximum voltage, right? So here's our expression. And finally, we're gonna solve for the current. Again, it's not frequently asked for, but we know that I is equal to negative DQ DT. So we're gonna take the negative derivative. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna have D DT, or the negative D DT, of our expression Q of T, which happened to be Q naught E to the negative T over RC. And we can write I is equal to, our expression is gonna be Q over RC times E to the negative T over RC. Now this is just coming from when you do the derivative, right? Okay, so that's your expression. Okay. Again, the AP will ask you to solve for a graph, or draw a graph. So, cardinal axes. This time I'm going to graph voltage versus time. So I have time in seconds, and I have a voltage, V, right? Okay, so let's graph what happens at T approaches infinity. Well, when T approaches infinity, I've completely discharged my capacitor, so I'm going to have zero voltage. So I'm approaching zero, so at t equals infinity. At t equals zero, well, we know that we have the maximum voltage, and that happens to be q over c, big Q over c, uh, because we know we start out with the maximum big Q. And we're going to decrease nonlinearly. It's going to be an exponential decrease, and we're going to have something like that. Okay, that didn't happen. And there you go, that's your graph. Okay, um, what happens at RC? Good question. Well, at RC, we're going to have an area under the curve again, so we're going to lose roughly 37% because, well, at T equals RC, we're going to see that for uh, V, we're going to do V naught over E to the negative, uh, e, V naught over E, right? Because it's V naught times E to the negative 1 when T equals RC. And this is roughly 0.368% of your maximum. You've lost that much. And there's your graph. So just a quick review, um, remember that once you solve for your function Q of T, you can derive almost uh, pretty much all of the rest of the equations from it. So for our charging, we have a, a battery, a resistor, and a capacitor. You're going to solve for your equation Q of T, uh, remembering that I is equal to dQ dt, positive dQ dt, because you're increasing. You can solve for your V of T by dividing by C, and your I of T is just done by taking the derivative. Um, your RC will provide six, uh, 0.632 epsilon, which is 63.2% of your maximum charge. And that's it for charging. And for discharging, it's just now you only have a capacitor and a resistor, and your I is negative dQ dt because you're losing charge. Solving for your Q of t function, you can derive your V and your I functions. And your graph, RC provides when 0.368 um, percent, oh, 36.8 percent has been dissipated. And I guess that's the end of the lesson. Good luck, guys.